Hi everybody, let's talk a little bit about acid reflux. Uh, acid reflux is uh, a very common thing that I see in my office. It's also something that uh, is affecting approximately 40% of all Americans complain of some degree of acid reflux. And you know, the, medic the uh, television tells us all the time, you know, that Prilosec and Prevacid and Tums and all this stuff will neutralize that acid, and they do, okay? So I'm definitely not disputing that, however, <clears throat> I ask people all the time, if you were to stop taking that acid medicine, the acid reducers or whatever, okay, would the problem go away? Every one of them almost always says, no, if I don't take that, it comes right back. So is it really fixing anything? And that's one of the things I want to talk to you a little bit about today is the cause, at least from my experience, of acid reflux is faulty diaphragm function, um, emo mental or emotional stress and on occasion, some nutrient deficiencies. Now, the thing about stomach acid is it's actually very important. It helps us digest our food so that it can be absorbed and utilized by our body. It also protects us from parasites, fungus, bacteria, viruses, things like that that we might pick up in some of our food. And that is if our stomach's working properly. So what I try to tell everyone is that acid reflux is most of the time a diaphragm problem, that muscle underneath our rib cage it helps us breathe and helps get oxygen to all of our you know body parts so I try to tell people all the time if you can get the diaphragm balanced that diaphragm muscle balanced and fixed with different applied kinesiology corrections as well as mechanical or chiropractic corrections um, you're gonna do pretty well so I have found almost 99 percent of the people that come in complaining of overproduction of acid really don't have an overproduction this is going to sound counterintuitive. Most often it's an underproduction. Okay? And so I know that sounds crazy. It's like, wait a minute, I'm producing too much. It's up in my throat. The only reason the acid is up in your throat is because your diaphragm has some weaknesses and it's allowing that acid to be in the wrong place. So let's talk about an applied kinesiology approach to acid reflux. Most of the time it involves mechanical corrections. Um, the nerve supply to the diaphragm comes out of the neck area in the middle of the neck as well as in the lower uh, thoracic area and um, so you have to make sure those areas are uh, not locked up and moving properly that way the diaphragm can fully expand. Another thing I see a lot is torques in the rib cage. Okay? So many people, if you lie them down on their back and you put your thumbs under the end of each rib cage, you'll see that one side's higher than the other. Now, <clears throat> that should happen some of the times because of the liver on that right side, but most of the time you'll see gross torques in their, pel in their uh, rib cage. And so a lot of times we have to go through and make different corrections to help balance the rib cage out, unlock the areas of their neck and their um, lower thoracic area, as well as a pelvic torque that's very common that puts a lot of stress on the diaphragm. The other thing I see that's pretty common when it comes to acid reflux are, is what is called a hiatal hernia. So the hiatus is an area right there at the end of your breastbone, and there's a weakness there. It can become very tender and very sore. Um, a lot of times in my practice, whenever I have people on the table and I touch over that area, most of them will complain that it's tender or it's very tight. So again, a lot of times that involves mechanical corrections to fix that. Now, one other thing that I wanna uh, talk about too, as far as mechanical corrections, is there are even two bones in the feet that have a connection to stomach function because of the acupuncture system. So it's very common that I have to make a correction to a bone in the ankle on either side in order to help balance the diaphragm out. And uh, that's a little bit too much to go into on this uh, video, but, um, so it's very common to uh, find that in people all the time. Now the other thing I see that's pretty common as far as a contributor to acid reflux that doesn't get a lot of, uh, a lot of press, if you will, are mental and emotional stressors that people are dealing with. A lot of times people are dealing with mental and emotional stress that is causing stress to their stomach as well as stress to their diaphragm and other parts of their body. And when they're stressed to the stomach and the diaphragm, um, you know, acid reflux is one of the symptoms a person can have. So there are certain techniques we use to help um, neutralize the effects that those mental and emotional stressors are having on the body physiology. And then thirdly, on occasion, you'll find, and we usually check for this after I've done all the mechanical corrections and different, you know, emotional or mental corrections if necessary, 
we check for any nutrient needs. Sometimes, um, if a person has been dealing with this problem for quite some time, they might need the help of certain enzymes temporarily until their body has a chance to build its enzymes levels back up to normal. So next time you see a Prilosec or Prevacid commercial, just know that the cause of acid reflux is not a Prilosec deficiency. Okay, many times it's because of faulty physiology, faulty biomechanics, and that doesn't get a lot of press. But I found 99% of the time that to be true. Uh, that those, if you fix, make those corrections, acid reflux usually goes away for good, if not, you know, for a good while, depending on the person's lifestyle and the level of stress in their life. Anyway, I hope some of this information was helpful. If you have any additional questions, just private message me. Um, you can also send me an email at drtoryhinson at gmail.com if you have any additional questions about acid reflux or any other health problem. And so anyway, I hope this video was a little helpful and uh, best of luck to you. Hope you have a great day.